in some of the the areas where mm -hmm. they're going to feel those impacts and starting very soon, guys. Absolutely. I mean, you saw and you heard from Tony's live shot that the waves are just beginning to increase. You can hear them. And as we go throughout the day today and tomorrow, that's going to be one of the biggest concerns that we have with the storm. We've got a window this morning. I mean, we've already been seeing overnight last night, even yesterday afternoon, tropical storm force wind gusts in the area. This morning is going to be a window where if we need to do last minute preps in the house, we're good to go. If we need to evacuate, we're good to go because later this afternoon and evening, things are going to go downhill, especially after sunset tonight, Kellyanne. Yeah, and here's the interesting thing. We were talking about that wind uh, field earlier. I we want to show you how wide span this is because typically when we talk about tropical systems, the wind field isn't that large, but with this system, since it's made its transition from uh, subtropical to tropical, the wind field is very expansive. So here's that center of circulation. It's now approaching the Bahamas. You can see that counterclockwise circulation. But when we show you the current wind field, it is almost 700 miles in length and we can see already some of those winds now beginning to approach the I-4 corridor and I-75. Recent wind gusts have reached about 40 miles per hour in Melbourne. However, those wind gusts are expected to increase throughout the day today. Want to show you our two major models, European on the left, GFS on the right by 930 on Wednesday evening. So later on this evening, we start to get those strongest winds right along our beach locations anywhere from about 45 to 60 miles per hour. As we work throughout the late night hours, and early tomorrow morning, we really start to get a lot of that heavy wind moving into our area. Now, the GFS, that center of circulation, is a little bit farther north compared to the European. Either way, we are expecting damaging winds across the area. It cuts across the peninsula of Florida throughout the morning on Thursday. But take a look at Thursday afternoon. We're still dealing with some of those winds, but then throughout the day on Thursday, those winds gradually begin to let up from south to north as this system pulls away. Of course, one of the biggest concerns is going to be the high surf, the threat for beach erosion and even potentially storm surge. Here's a look later on today. Seas at about 17 to 20 feet by Thursday, 18 to 21 feet. And then again, as a storm pulls away, we'll start to see those slowly subside by Saturday and Sunday. Seas right around three to four feet. But again, storm surge also going to be the one concern that we are keeping a close eye on three to five feet of storm surge. So because of that, we are expecting very high impacts along our coastal locations. Beach erosion definitely going to be a significant concern. Wind gusts on the high side. Now that we're really starting to see the system kind of pull through, we've already seen wind gusts again about 40 to 50 miles per hour over the past about 24 hours. Flooding also going to be a concern, but keep in mind it's not going to be an Ian concern. Ian, we were talking about feet of rainfall for this. We are talking less than a foot, so not expected to see a lot of widespread flooding, but areas along the St. John's River, uh, easily prone areas to flood, certainly going to be a concern. And the tornado threat now has bumped up. You can see by today, especially from the metro and east, we're in at level two out of five. That's a scattered threat for a few severe storms including the threat for tornadoes. Tomorrow, that threat lifts up towards the north. We're going to be focused mainly on Flagler County for the level two out of five, but still could see a few more isolated tornadoes in the metro tomorrow as this system moves through. Thankfully, though, right now, not tracking any severe weather, but we are tracking some rainfall. Meteorologist Eric Burris has more. All right, good morning to you, Kellyanne. So here's where we're at. We've got these gusty downpours. They've been persistent over the last 12 to 18 hours time up here around Flagler County, Holly Hill into Volusia County, Daytona Beach, Deland, a good passing tropical downpour, more sitting off the shoreline. And take a look as we come in on our first warning live Doppler radar, looking at the velocity channels, that's a 35, 40 mile per hour wind coming in around the Ponce Inlet, at least at radar level, which is just above the surface. But translating down, you're talking a 20 to 30 mile per hour wind. Same situation here in Brevard County from Merritt Island back over to the Barrier Island, the Patrick Space Force Base. These showers are coming in through this afternoon. Take a look at Futurecast. We've got the greens showing up, so more of these downpours moving in. And then into sunset tonight, we start to see the feeder bands exit, but the core of the storm system comes in. Now again, and this is one model, but we're going to go with this at least for perspective. Very intense winds and rain into Brevard County. This is 11 o'clock tonight. 
Then into tomorrow morning, that shield of rain marches into the metro, the core of the storm system coming ashore here in Brevard County. We have a just widespread nasty, nasty weather set up into tomorrow morning. There's 5 a.m. Core of the storm system somewhere around either Brevard County or just to the south in the Treasure Coast. We're watching these tropical feeder bands moving through the worst of the weather, now getting into the metro by 6 37 o'clock and then moving into our western areas by 9 o'clock. The good news. This is a big deal by lunchtime tomorrow into the early afternoon. The wraparound effect means only a few showers with gusty wind, so things will be dramatically improving. OK, to county by county forecasts. Everybody wants to hear their county. We're going to go through all of them one at a time at a time. And if we don't get to yours, just keep with us. OK, all right tonight through tomorrow morning, Brevard County, you're going to be hammered by some of the worst of the weather. Winds running 60 to 70 miles an hour with gusts, especially out on the barrier islands, running 70 to 80 mile per hour plus. Flagler County, further up the shoreline, it's going to be tomorrow morning through tomorrow afternoon, 40 to 55 mile per hour winds gusting up to 65 miles an hour. For Seminole County, we're talking about very heavy rainfall, four to seven inches of rain possible, gusts running up to about hurricane force. And then out west to Sumter County, we're looking at winds running 60 to 70 miles per hour with some very heavy rainfall. So putting all of this together, power outages, obviously a big concern. The biggest concern for power outages out along the Brevard Barrier Islands and then from about, say, uh, Melbourne area off to the south in Brevard County. Widespread power outages anticipated, likely power outages for much of the rest of Central Florida and then further to the north as the storm system's a bit weaker. We're talking about less and less of a threat. So for today, it's those passing downpours. Tomorrow is when the storm system is impacting us. It is a first warning weather day, then just some backside rains on Friday, Saturday, Sunday looking absolutely fantastic. Fantastic high temperatures on Sunday in the mid range of the 70s. Live coverage continues. Stay with us.